What's up guys, Gabriel Varga here. Recently, I put out a video showing the game plan, the tactics, the strategy that I used to defeat the Muay Thai legend, Lerdzilla. And I got great feedback on the video, lots of requests for more like this. So today we are diving in on how I defeated Kevin Ross. Now Kevin was the poster boy for American Muay Thai for almost as long as I can remember. As soon as I started researching who was the number one fighter in North America, Kevin's name came up. And he accomplished so many milestones in his career, things like defeating feeding high level Thai fighters, being on the Joe Rogan podcast, just amazing, amazing accomplishments throughout his career. So how did I manage to KO this North American Muay Thai legend in one round? We're gonna break it all down in today's episode. Now, before we get into the video, one of the first things I really wanna point out is because it's only a two minute fight, we are gonna break down very detailed what things really worked and what things I had practiced over and over. This was not just, oh, I threw punches and just, you know, hope that I would KO him. Most of the things that I'm throwing in this fight pre-planned. Even things as detailed as my round kicks and timing when to throw them. That was planned out. All right, we're gonna start off and look at the first five seconds of this fight. And you might be going, what can he possibly do in the first five seconds? But in the first five seconds, I throw one technique two times that we drilled over and over and over in training camp. And I think right away, you'll see why. All right, guys, here we go. And Kevin comes out, he throws the jab. Oh, corkscrew, back a little bit. He goes to throw again, corkscrew. All right, let's pause. I'm gonna back up here. And I wanna to explain to you guys what the corkscrew punch is. It's not a big overhand like you see a lot of people throw. It's a very particular technique. When somebody throws a jab, you fade to the inside of their arm. Normally you slip to the outside when somebody throws a jab because you're safer out here from the cross. But what I use the corkscrew for is as the jab comes out, I move my head off the center line. As the punch goes to pass, I come over top. I don't come way over. I come right tight to their arm and I try to tag them in the jaw. And you guys can see right from the get-go that this is something that I land like that. Why did we prep it? Because we watched Kevin Ross. And a lot of times he trods forward. He moves forward, jab, jab. But I noticed that his shoulder does not protect the side of his head. If you don't do that, you are very, very open for the corkscrew punch. Here's the next technique I wanna focus on. With Kevin, who's a Muay Thai fighter, he is so good at catching low kicks. And if we look at this kick right here, bang, I land the low kick. So how did I do it? And I did it multiple times in the fight without him being able to catch because Muay Thai fighters very often are so good at taking the shot and grabbing. But I knew if I stalled, if I tried to throw the kick and really let it ain't go through, it would stick against his leg for too long. So you'll notice the speed with which I throw this low kick. Instead of boom and letting it sit there for too long, it's just pop just a little flick. The speed is going to create a little bit of a frustration for the thigh in terms of damage, but even more frustrating is when you have a game plan which normally works. They kick me, I catch it, I hit them. But now he's getting kicked, he's going to grab it, and the kick's gone. So once again, let's move on here. Now something that we knew about Kevin coming in is he's a pressure fighter. He likes to move forward. He likes to dictate the pace of the fight. Now that's something I like to do too. So the question became, do I want Kevin to pressure forward well, I pressure forward and we're gonna meet in the middle of the ring. And some people might go, yeah, you know what, Gabe? Your striking is better than his. Let's just meet in the middle of the ring and bang him out and you'll win. But my brother, my cornerman, myself, we didn't like that plan. We figured, let him move forward. As he moves forward, sometimes I jump in, I throw, but then I exit. Or if he's coming towards me, I move backwards. And again, I angle and then I go for the attack. If somebody is comfortable, forward, 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 chasing people down, and you just stop and let them come to you, you're letting them fight their fight. All right guys, here's something else I wanna talk about in this clip. Kevin throws the jab, he throws the low kick, and I hollow out. Now I wanna break down hollowing out with you guys, and what I mean by that is taking the lead leg and pulling it back and creating an extra little bit of distance. And the reason I think this works so well is so many people in Muay Thai or kickboxing are used to always checking, standing within range and checking and checking. And you always give somebody something to hit as opposed to following right through and missing. 
So we drilled this a lot for Kevin because I'd seen so many clips of Kevin round kicking people in the leg over and over and seeing them start to get hurt. Every time I see movement off that lead leg coming low to just pull back. Now something to recognize about Muay Thai fighters that kickboxers don't get as much training in is they have the ability to catch kicks. They're very good when a kick comes at catching and we knew that to be the case with Kevin. He was super talented at taking a left round kick catching right here and then sweeping people onto their backs. So I knew if I just stood here and I did a switch and then went to throw that left round kick, well, he's steady and in position, he'll probably catch it. But if you wait for somebody to move towards you, as they're moving towards you, they're on the hunt. They're not necessarily thinking as defensively. And I was able to utilize this round kick just a little up to keep him away. And because he's on the attack, he's not as proficient at moving forward and finding that catch. Now, something else to note, guys, Kevin's style, his hand position, whereas mine is fairly locked, he is rather loose with his arms. They kind of hang out a little bit from his head, and that leaves him open to wider shots that would come around the guard. And you will notice, I'll show, throw some clips up here, that I did manage to land a number of hooks that snuck behind, and it's just being aware that the hand is, isn't really tight. If somebody has their hands like this, they're really locked up. I'm gonna be hunting to the body or probably looking for uppercuts. The hooks aren't gonna really land on somebody like this. Now, if you guys know anything about me, you know the left hook is a big part of my game plan, especially down to the body. You'll see a number of times here, right there, I managed to land it. Now, this wasn't specific just for Kevin, but again, I did drill it because I knew that when punches came, like most people, he raises his elbows up quite a bit to defend his head, as opposed to that Dutch style where you're here and you kind of crouch. So the body is more open. You touch once, you touch twice, and then maybe one more to the head or you come right down to the body. And in that combo you just saw, I'll throw it up one more time here, you're able to see that one, two, body open. Now let's talk about the shot that stunned Kevin and ultimately, in my opinion, probably led to the end of the fight. And with the clip up here, you see I control the neck, I pull down to the knee, and I come to the left hook. Now this is a technique you don't see that often. It's very rare for people to throw a knee, come down, and come right into their shot. A lot of times it's knee, plant your foot down, and then punch as opposed to one and very quickly into the punch there. But when you manage to find that ability to throw a technique, and as soon as your foot hits the ground, you're already landing your punch, you're able to keep that consistent pace on your opponent, where it's not one, two, but it's one, two. And then from there, guys, you, I see him wobble. I do my sort of patented switch knee, and then I just go on the hunt. And nothing here is really anything I really drilled for. I just let the hands go. I saw he was done and just fire, fire, fire those hands until the ref steps in. I didn't think he would step in. I thought I was gonna get a knockdown there at some point. Kevin is a tough dude. He does not go down like that. I was hitting him and hitting him and he's still on his feet. Even when he was sort of out on his feet, he was still standing up. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown, this look into the two minutes I had with Kevin Ross. If you didn't understand before now, hopefully you do, this is not just the victory where you jump in and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna fight. There is strategy, there is game plan. That is what my entire camp revolves around. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. And as always, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.